morning and praise the name of God this morning. We've come to the house of the Lord to praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We've come to his house not only to receive but to give praise. And we are ready to receive blessings this morning. Let us invite the Lord and the Holy Spirit this morning into our service. Hallelujah. Dear Father, we give you thanks, God. Thank you for this day, the day that you have made, God, to bless us, God. The day that you have made to speak to us, God. The day that you have made to fill us with your Holy Ghost, God. We invite you to this service, God. We invite you to this service, God, that you might minister, God. That you might work, God. That you might answer prayers. That you might heal, God. And we're going to give you the glory, God. We've come to your house to praise your name, God. Because you're worthy of all praise and glory. In the name of Jesus, can we raise our hands? Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord this morning. Be prepared to receive what God has send for you this morning. Down, send it all down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come all down. Send it all down. Send it all down.
say that you're Amen. saved this morning. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes. Filled with the Holy Ghost yes. today. Baptized in the Holy Ghost this morning. I remember the time that he healed you. Anybody been healed in this house? Yes. Hallelujah. Delivered you this morning. Jesus, you've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Let's cross those aisles this morning. Be friendly. Shake hands. Elbow bump. Bump fist. Or just nod and say hello. Whatever you're comfortable with this morning. Make yourself friendly. Get around the people. Get around our visitors. Tell us good to see them in the house of the Lord. Jesus, I'll never forget what you did for me. be seated this morning. We're so thankful that you are here today to worship with us in spirit and in truth, and we're just looking forward to what God's going to do today uh, in our services today. So uh, come expect something from the Lord. Amen. Amen. I was glad when they said, let us come into the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. And we're just really rejoicing that we're here today. Also, a way of announcements that today is Mission Sunday, the first Sunday of every month is Mission Sunday. Brother Natalia will be taking up the mission offering later on this morning, but uh, uh, we're going to receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings here in just a minute, and so if you're listening on live stream, Sister Lisa is putting up the number at this time, or probably already has it. You can call in or text in the information, and she'll get it ran through if you need to use the ATM machine this morning. Also, today, talk about Mission Sunday. Uh, if you haven't ordered your pecans, we're selling pecans. We do this every year. It's our annual uh, fundraiser for missions. And uh, uh, if you haven't ordered your pecans, uh, tonight after service tonight is the last day that you get to order them. So they're $16 a bag. And uh, so if you want to, there's a sign-up sheet there. Tell us how many bags you're ordering. And uh, I know it may be a little cheaper at Walmart or Sam's or H-E-B, but, um, you know, last I, I read here the other day about H-E-B, Mr. Harry Butts. He's only worth $11 billion, <laughs> all right? So he doesn't need your pecan money, all right? God <laughs> needs your pecan money, all right? <coughs> Hallelujah. And so uh, 
uh, you can help him. And this Walton family, Sam's children, they're well taken care of also. I mean, they're the two, two and three top uh, richest people in the world, so they don't need the pecan money. But God does, and really God doesn't need it either. He's able to supply no matter what the need is, but he wants you uh, to uh, help missionaries on our field. And so uh, uh, if you'll do that, we'd greatly appreciate those <coughs> sign-up sheets back there. Sign up for that. Also, don't forget, every Sunday morning, 10, 15, there's a prayer meeting that goes on in the side room over here. And come in, spend some time and uh, praying and seeking the Lord for our Sunday morning service. So don't forget about that. And then um, also uh, coming up, the last Sunday evening of this month, on the 30th of October, uh, we'll be having our fall festival. We, uh, The last three years, we've had what we call a drive through fall festival. And we set up booths and cars fly through here. And we hand out bags of candy and hot dogs and uh, uh, just different things of that nature, drinks and so on. Uh, but in the process of talking about that, we need some candies to come in, all right? We normally give out around 150 to 200 pounds of candy for that day. And so uh, I think last year we had about 250 uh, cars and individuals come through. And so we need some candy to come in. I think right now back there's a, there's about... 20 pounds of candy. That's not going to get it, folks. So uh, uh, we need you to go to Sam's, Walmart, br start bringing that candy in. Uh, just make sure it's not a bag of candy corn because we're not going to wrap those in, and, and do all that. Make sure it's those fun treats that's already wrapped or whatever. And uh, we appreciate that so much. I went yesterday at Sam's and was able to get uh, big bags of candy and Tootsie Rolls and things like that for $9.99 or $10. And, uh, they were huge bags. And I don't, I don't know how many more they have there, but that's just throwing that out there to you so you can go by and pick those up. And we appreciate all that you do. And uh, tonight, everybody say 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock tonight. We're going to start back Sunday night service. Been out for a while because our air conditioner on this side's down, but thank the Lord, God's starting to cool down South Texas a little bit, <laughs> and so we can get back on Sunday night services uh, tonight at six and uh, come out and be a part of them. I promise you, you'll receive a blessing uh, from the Lord if you'll come out uh, and see what God's got in store for you tonight. We're going to be preaching this evening on the title, uh, starting a series, I think, tonight, on a title on the position of the believers with God. And so that's what we'll be coming from this evening. Uh, so don't forget about those things there that are happening. I'd like to say also, uh, last week we were gone, and uh, uh, Brother David done a wonderful job Wednesday night, yes. uh, preaching and testifying and leading the service on Wednesday night. He left his notes up here. Man, if I had that many notes on Wednesday night, we'd still be here. Hallelujah. But, uh, I mean, he had a whole book of them. And uh, then Sunday morning, he led the service and done a wonderful job leading the service. And Brother Natalie just come in and preached a, a, a beautiful sermon and a heart-challenging sermon. And we got to listen to some of it and as we was traveling and different things this week. And uh, we'll listen to all of it. He did a great job. We appreciate them. Let's give them a big hand this morning. Hallelujah. That's good to be back in the saddle today and uh, be back in church. We got Micah all married off, and we got one of those things now in our family. I don't know if you all know what that is, but uh, an in-law. Amen. So, uh, uh, the the, uh, the jury is still out, whether it's an in-law or an outlaw. We'll let you know about 10 years, all right? But no, I think it's going to be a good in-law. Somebody said, well, you're losing a son at the wedding the other day. I said, well, hopefully this time next year I can say that I've gained a daughter-in-law. <laughs> Amen. Hopefully it'll be that way. But uh, no, I know it is. Jessica's a sweet girl, JJ, a wonderful lady. And so be praying for them as they are venturing out of their lives together. We thank you, uh, everybody who did anything to help last Sunday to be a success. Yes, Hallelujah. Man. We're going to receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. 
And I know some of you are going to go ahead and give during this time for missions. We can go back to the ATM machine. Just make sure you tell Sister Lisa what you, how you're dividing it up or fill it out on your envelope there. But we are going to come back for your mission offering too this morning. So can we stand? Let's just ask God to bless this offering this morning. Brother David, you pray and ask God to bless the offering.
Hallelujah. Can we raise our hands? Hallelujah. And say, God, you're great in this place, God. Come to your, this place, God. Minister in our lives, God. Hallelujah. We're going to go to prayer this morning. Let us continue. Remember to pray in, in this time for all those in need. We have a fa Pastor Halfacre's parents. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for our uh, Pastor Halfacre, our uh, wife Sheila and, and Micah, our pastor of family. God bless them, give him wisdom. They, they've, uh, they've, uh, they, they serve us. He brings the word of God, the men of God that God has choos, chosen to lead us to uh, the right path. Let us always pray for him. Let's pray also for Sister Cecilia Bass, our brother uh, Joe and Linda Flag Flaker, Sister Bonnie Peters, Sisters uh, Jenny's daughter Sheila, Benjamin Tolbert, Eddie, Michelle Montoya, and their family. And let's pray also for pray for uh, Josh Oshawa. He has a doctor's appointment this week. Let's pray for God uh, for God to have control in that situation. God in touch. We serve an Almighty God, an Almighty God. He's in control of everything. He's in control of everything. Let us also pray for our country. We need prayer for our nation in this time more than never. If, if we were to talk about the state of our nation, there would be a lot of good news that we can share this morning here, what's going on around our nation. We need prayer. We need prayer for our leaders, for our elected officials. We need prayer for the election that we have just around the corner. It's like what, a month, a month uh, from now for God to take control of our nation. Let's pray for the church in America. We need revival in this time. We need revival in the church. Let's pray for the family, families in our church, family in our community, families in our nation. We need healing in the family in this time. You know, we're praying for revival. Revival doesn't start at church. It starts at the family. Start at family le level. Start when families pray, when families are united, when families are strong, and we let God move in the family and then church is composed of families we are the church the church is not this building we are the church of god so we need god to heal the family to god to bring healing to our our hearts let's pray for that let's pray uh, also for our missionaries i know we're uh, later on collecting the missions offering but let's pray for missionaries those who have left uh everything to go and preach the gospel this week i was uh you know they're they're commemorating uh what uh the they're remembering uh, the war in Bosnia and Croatia, some of you might remember in the early 1990s, how hard uh, that was. But one of the things that I, it was interesting that I was watching one of the documentaries, and it was not a Christian channel, was the impact that a lot of missionaries, American missionaries made, made during this time of, of hurt, this, you know, all, all things that, that happened. How uh, in a time they've helped some families heal and those people left everything, they've put their lives at risk, and they've gone to those countries, not only to bring the word of God, but also bring a word of healing, bring also consolation to these nations who suffer a lot. And what we're seeing in Eastern Europe at this time, even with the war that is going to Ukraine, it's a revival that is happening in, in, in these nations, how much they've shown the, uh, the church has grown, even in Bosnia, you know, it's, it's a Muslim country in, in uh Kosovo is where the church is growing the most in, in the world. It's a Muslim country. There's revival happening there in Iran, in Iraq. So there's missionaries that are going to these places. Let's pray for them this morning. Let's pray for the persecuted church. And let's pray for our sisters and brothers here. I know there, there are some requests this morning. Let's pray for one each one another during this time. For God to touch us. For we to, we, we to be touched by, the, by the, the Holy Spirit this morning. Let us go in prayer. Dear Father. We come to you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, God. We come to the throne of grace, God. We're in your house this morning, God. We've come to praise your name, God. And we've come, God, also in need this morning, God. We know, God, that you answer prayers, God. You send your son, Jesus, to the cross, God, so we might be saved, God. So great, we can be touched by grace, God. The grace that heals us, God. The grace that saves us, God. And we come this morning, God, to the source of grace, Jesus Christ, in need of a touch of your Holy Spirit, God. We ask for the request that we presented this morning, God. You know their names, God. We mention their names, their situations, God. We need you to touch, God. I pray for my brothers and sisters this morning here. 
their brothers and sisters that need such a healing, God. They need, you, they, they need you to work in their finances, God. Oh, some of them need jobs, God. Some of them, God, need peace. God, need to be healed in their heart. Some of them are going to mental, God, spiritual battles, God. I ask for a breakthrough this morning, God. In the name of Jesus, God. I cast out oh, and break the choke of the enemy, God. This morning we're free to praise and worship your name, God. We ask for our nation, God. Oh no, we know, God, that many people in this nation, God, have turned your back on you, God. But we, this morning we stand, God, and before you in, in favor of our nation, God, the United States of America, asking you for mercy, God, asking you to bring revival, God, asking you to reheal the family, God. We pray, God, this morning, believing in the power of your Holy Spirit this morning, God. We pray for our leaders, God. Oh, take control, God. We need, God. We need a touch, God. We need a divine intervention this time more than ever, God. How the family is being destroyed, God. How the spirit of evil is taking control in schools, God. In the house of government, God. But we, God, your word says that the doors of Haiti would not prevail. The doors of hell would not prevail against the church of God. And we're the church of God this morning, God. Standing and fighting, God in the spirit of evil, God. Oh, we praise your name, God. We give you thank you for what you've done and what you're doing. In the name of Jesus, can we say thank you, God? Thank you, God, because God has healed. Thank you, God, because he's answering prayer. Thank you, God, because this morning we're all victorious. We're all victorious this morning. You are awesome in this place. Today we're going to come for our mission offering here in just a, a few minutes, a minute or two here. And uh, missions should be a very vital part of each of our lives. And when we give to missions, we're giving because we can't go, but we can send others. And that is what keeps our missionaries on the field. And uh, we have some very worthy missionaries that we support here at the church, and, and not just the ones we support. There's many, many, many thousands of them that are working all around the world to send forth this message. Some of them are in countries that are war-ridden. Some of them are in countries that are poverty-ridden. Some of them are in countries that are full of agnostics and atheism that they once were countries that believed in God, but now they've gone a whole different direction. Some of them are countries that are fighting communism, socialism, all other things. Their lives are being put in the li line every day just because they promote the Word of God, just because they tell lost people for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son just for doing the work that Jesus sent his disciples out to do they're willing to put themselves out on that line facing persecution and death and martyrs for the cause some of them brothers and sisters in these war torn areas they don't only need our finances, but they need our prayer. They need our continual prayer of support, our continual finances so they can stay, do the work. Some of them are fixing to come home to itinerate so that they can go back again. Many of them are facing the same things that you and I are facing. Here in America, our cost of living in the last year and a half has went up around almost 20% altogether across the board. And, and in Europe and other places around the world, their cost of living has went up 
20, 25, 30, 40 percent. And so it's taken more for them to live, just like it does us, and to do their ministry. Not only do they have to supply money to live, just as we would live here, food, clothing, shelter, fuel, vehicles, but they also have to supply the money to build churches, to build ministries, to send out workers into the harvest, to train people to do that work. And some of them are trainers, other others are right out there in the bushland doing it themselves. How, whatever God has called them to do. But yet, it takes prayer, it takes our finances to keep them on that field. Jesus said, go win the world. Go you to all the world and preach the gospel. And that is our call. Whether they are doing it here or whether they're doing it overseas, in Latin America, South America, Asia, wherever they're doing it, Europe, God is calling them to that area. And it is our duty as a Christian to help them stay on that field. So as you're writing out that check this morning, or you got it in your mind how much money you're going to give this morning to missions on that ATM or the cash you have in your pocket, remember that it's for the glory of God. Most missionaries, when they come home, when they retire, they don't have anything. They just live off of very little because they sacrifice their life. They're not, they didn't take a vow of poverty, but they did sacrifice it all in order for God to see His glory go forth through them to win souls. So this morning, Brother Natalia's going to come and pray over this offering. Let's stand all over this building. Hopefully you have taken time this morning to ask God to lay on your heart. Maybe you say, well, I always give X amount of money to missions. Well, remember, it costs you more to go to McDonald's now. It costs them more, whatever it is. Brother Natalie, come pray for this offering this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Your heavenly Father, we give you thanks, God, because you bless us, God. You give us the opportunity to bless God, others, Father. I ask that you bless each of my brothers and sisters who are giving an offering, God, this morning for the missionaries, God. Make sure that in your heart, God, those are giving, are going out and preaching the word, the word of love, God, the word of healing, the word of salvation, God. We ask that you bless, provide jobs, God, provide, bless, God, each one of us that are given this morning so we can continue to give, God, so your word can continue to be preached around the world. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. We worship you with lips of adoration. We worship you as a symphony of praise. Let this temple is able to give the missions this morning. Hallelujah. You may be seated today. Thank you, worship team, today. We're so thankful this morning that uh, you're here today worshiping with us. And uh, man, here we are, first Sunday of October. Can you believe that? Second day, I believe it is, right? Second day of October today. And we're just really excited 
about fall. I love fall. Hallelujah. Uh, it's my favorite season of, in all the seasons, and I know we have those who Christmas is their favorite season, but uh, I love fall. I love to see the leaves fall and the beautiful colors of it. I love deer hunting in fall. Hallelujah. And uh, other things of that nature. I love football. I love that Mississippi State put it on Texas A&M yesterday. I just love that. Amen. And uh, I just wish I was there to watch it. I've seen them beat them a couple times already. I wish I was there to watch it yesterday. But, uh, uh, yeah, and I know Texas did win yesterday, but we ain't going to talk about that. But uh, uh, we, uh, we are. We just love this time of the season and all the wonderful things about it. Um, our house smells like pumpkin spice and uh, cinnamon pumpkin spice and all those other things and uh, the decorations and all of that. It's just a wonderful time of the year. But uh, we do, this morning uh, is a very important day for a lot of different people today. But uh, today of all days, believe it or not, today of all days, 38 years ago, Tammy was born. So give her a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I wasn't supposed to tell how old she was. I'm sorry about that. But uh, uh, today was her birthday, but we just want to say thank you and uh, to them this morning and all the different other ones who have birthdays coming up uh, this month and uh, those who are here this morning. It's so good this morning to have Robert and, and Levi and Kristen back with us this morning. Been missing them. Give them a big hand this morning. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, I, I got a lesson a while ago. Uh, while while uh, you was bringing your mission offerings up this morning, I got a, a, a lesson in culture uh, from Brother Natalie. I asked him a couple questions real quickly. And uh, I said, what is your sister's, maiden, or your sister's name this morning, her last name? And he said, Riviera. And I said, well, that's your name. She's married. He said, well, they don't take their names over there, uh, their husband's name. I said, we're going to have to work on that culture a little bit. Hallelujah. But uh, it's good to have uh, Brother Riviera's, uh, Natalie's sister, mother with us today. Let's give them a big hand this morning also. And uh, her son. Amen. She just graduated from pharmacy school got all of her certifications done, and now she is a full-pledged pharmacist. So uh, uh, just excitement happening in their lives today, but we're glad they're here this morning. And we're glad you're here. Give yourselves a big hand today. Hallelujah. Amen. And I would say give the pastor a big hand for being back, but, but I may get booed this morning. But uh, uh, thank you all. Thank you all. But uh, we did. We had a great trip and uh, uh, got to spend some time with my mother-in-law, and that went fairly well, so we had a good trip, hallelujah, but uh, we did see family and friends, and just a wonderful time last week, but it's good to be back home. Brought your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Mark, and also the book of Jeremiah, the book of Mark, the book of Jeremiah this morning. Don't forget on Wednesday nights, uh, we're going to start a brand new fall series, uh, Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday night, so don't forget about that. Also, we'll be uh, serving a meal after service on Wednesday night like we do every Wednesday night. So don't forget about that. Uh, the third Wednesday night of the month, uh, we'll uh, have service. Then every uh, year in October, we set up a bonfire out there and different things like that. So we plan on that on the third Wednesday night. Also tonight, don't forget about tonight. Amen. Well, how many have found it in the Word of God? Jeremiah chapter number 4, verse number 3 is where we're going to start from uh, today. And you may have to be patient this morning. James had a blowout on his tire or something on his way in this morning. So uh, uh, Brother uh, Ismail is back there doing the best he can today. He's just carrying the full load. So uh, uh, be patient with him this morning. Jay, uh, Jeremiah chapter number 4, verse number 3. Can we stand for the reading? Then turn over to Mark chapter number 2. Also, Mark chapter number 2. We're going to be coming from both of those texts today. Hallelujah. The Bible says this this morning. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your foul ground, 
and so not among the thorns. Amen. Break up your fallow ground and so not among the thorns. Then turn with us to Mark chapter number 2 this morning. And we'll start with verse number 1. Mark chapter number 2 and verse number 1 today. The Bible says there, Mark chapter 2, verse number 1. And again he entered in Capernaum, and after some days it was noise that he was in the house. Hallelujah. Everybody say that Jesus is in the house this morning. Jesus is in the house. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Hallelujah. If he doesn't show up, we're not having church today. The Bible went on and said, And straightway many gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached and the word unto them. And they come unto him bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come in nigh unto him, for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they led him down, or let him down the bed therein, the sick of palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we love you today. We are so thankful, God, for your word. We thank you for this beautiful Sunday. We thank you for a day that we can come and worship in spirit and truth. Father, we ask that you anoint, that you'll minister this morning in Jesus' name. And everybody says... Amen and amen. Turn your neighbor and say, good morning, neighbor. Hallelujah. You may be seated this morning. We're starting today a brand new series, and we're going to be preaching this series through the month of uh, October, Lord willing. And uh, the series, the name of the series is the top line up there, The Blessing of Brokenness. The blessings of brokenness. But this morning, our title today is What to Do with Broken Things. What to do with the broken things in our lives today. How many of you ever had something to break on you unexpectedly? Maybe your car broke down this morning or this week unexpectedly. Maybe your wash machine broke down unexpectedly. Those of you that work with computers, maybe you had a, a breakdown in that computer and it shut down at work unexpectedly. Sometimes broken things are hindrance in our lives. Sometimes broken things are wonderful in our lives. Friday, I was mowing the yard and got all done, and man, I was tired. I mean, I was dog tired. It was about 6 o'clock, and uh, mowed the whole place and the whole block here, and, and uh, mowed our yard and all of this and all of that, and uh, I thought, man, I'm ready just to go in and take a shower and uh, just uh, take it easy. Uh, for a little while before bedtime, and I, as I was looking across the yard, I noticed that there was water running there where there wasn't supposed to be water running. And so I had to spend the next hour and a half getting everything together and uh, uh, fix a water line that had gotten broken. And I thought, man, this isn't what I wanted to do at this time, I was ready to take a shower, uh, get cleaned up, but God had other things in store. And so uh, I fixed that water line and uh, I got it all done. And just uh, when I got in the house, finally, it just felt so good uh, to relax this morning. But sometimes God allows things uh, to be broken in order to 
help us to draw near to him this morning. Uh, the scriptures again, over and over and over, and we're going to get into some of these uh, different things throughout the month, uh, but over and over again, we, talk, we find in the scriptures, uh, they talk about broken things. Uh, they talk about broken nets, uh, broken hearts, uh, broken fellowship this morning, uh, broken laws, broken covenants, uh, broken loaves this morning, a uh, bread, uh, broken ground, uh, the broken spirit this morning. Uh, but so many times in our lives, we like everything just to run smooth. No change, amen. Whatever time you get up, you like for that to be your norm. Your, your breakfast routine. How many has your breakfast routine? Whatever you do, uh, however you do it. And uh, your, your lunch routine, your work routine, your supper routine. Uh, we even have a routine on how we end our day. How we go to bed. What we do. Sometimes God interrupts those things. He doesn't allow us to stay in that comfort zone that we're in this morning. Several years ago, we were traveling and preaching revivals, and we had this big fifth-wheel travel trailer, and um, we were down in Loosedale, Mississippi, uh, preaching at Barton Assembly of God for uh, Brother Jones or Steve Jones, and, and as we were traveling down there, I noticed I was having some trouble with my truck. Something was going on with that old diesel truck that I was pulling that trailer with. And uh, when I got to the church, uh, that revival, I still remember it uh, uh, to this day, that particular revival, we got there right in time for Sunday night service uh, because we had been fighting truck troubles uh, the whole way there and uh, uh, the trials of doing that. And, and I just ran in and changed my clothes and uh, uh, got into the pulpit and preached and God moved. And uh, the next morning, uh, I, I began to think about work, what to do about about that truck uh, uh, really that night. Uh, I told the pastor, I said, in the morning, uh, I've got to be working on the truck. I'm not for sure. Uh, well, lo and behold, uh, he had a brother-in-law by the name of Mac Joe that wasn't a Christian, but he was a diesel mechanic and just so happened to be off work on Monday. Uh, didn't have to go to work. And uh, he said, i tell you what, I'm going to send Mac Joe over here uh, uh, tomorrow and he's going to work on your truck for you. I said, man, I don't want to put him on his day off. Uh, I don't let me have some time, uh, figure it out what's going on with it. Uh, he said, no, Mac Joe will be here tomorrow. Uh, I said, all right. So at eight o'clock on, on Monday morning, uh, here come Mac Joe. Uh, he knocked on our door and met him. Uh, we got underneath that truck and uh, we worked and we worked and uh, we crawled around. And uh, if you've never worked on a truck, on the ground in South Mississippi. It's like here. There's fire ants everywhere. I mean, we were ate up with fire ants. and uh, But the whole time uh, Mac Joe was underneath there, I was asking God, Lord, help me to witness to him. Help me to uh, somehow to get him on fire for you uh, to see that he needs you in his life. Uh, friend, before the week was over, uh, Mac Joe come over three more times and we got that truck running perfect. But before the week was over, God took that broken thing, amen, that broken truck, and used it for a blessing. And Mac Joe gave his heart to the Lord, amen. Sometimes God's got to take something that is broken in our lives and allow it to be used for his glory today. How many times do we look at things like that, though? First thing I want to preach on this morning is a broken roof. A broken roof. Could you imagine here today? Jesus is in the house preaching. Preaching the word. People getting healed. People getting delivered. The house was so full they were standing 
They weren't even sitting. They were standing from front, front to back. There was no way to get anybody or navigate to bring somebody down front. Wouldn't that be a wonderful problem today? That people, so many people come to church this morning. That we had to open up the back doors. Hallelujah. Amen. We had to have Job back there flexing his muscles to keep them all under line. Hallelujah. Keep them all. Wouldn't that be great? I don't know how you feel, but I think that would be wonderful. Hallelujah. Today, the world, though, is totally different. Jesus was preaching. And this man who had been sick for a long time needed to get to Jesus, needed to get there. He's a paraclegic. He couldn't walk. His limbs were crooked and twisted. And they brought him that day to see Jesus. Friend, this morning, we need people in this hour to bring them that need to see Jesus. How many understand what I just said? We need people to bring people that need Jesus. There they realized doctors was not going to help. They had probably took him to many physicians of that day, like the woman with the issue of blood. But they realized the only thing that would help would be to get to Jesus. This morning in your lives, you come here this morning, things may be broken this morning. You say, man, I don't know what to do. Dream this morning, get to Jesus. Today we're people that are so busy enjoying the pleasures of life, enjoying everything else that we forget that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith this morning. We forget this morning that Jesus is the answer and the solution for all of our problems today. We go everywhere else but to Jesus. But these four men realized their friend needed to get to Jesus. The people, though, that were in that crowd, they were so busy enjoying the presence of God that they forgot about this poor lame man needing to get to Jesus. Sometimes if we're not careful, we'll get so caught up as a church and doing the things to keep the church going that we forget that there's lame people out there Hurting people this morning. How many's following me what I'm preaching? Hurting out there this morning that needs to get to Jesus today. That needs to get to the place that they can find the answer for their lives this morning that is broken today. They're, they're so busy. Oh, we got to worry about this thing and this function in the church and that function. When really the only function we need to worry about is to let the lost and dying world, let those that are hurting this morning, to know that there's a bomb in Gilead this morning, to save the sin sick soul, to let the world know that there's a healer that is in the house that has come to heal all manner of diseases this morning, to let the world know there's a reconciler who is there this morning. To reconcile all men back to God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Somebody shout hallelujah today. But we get so emphasized upon everything else. So busy defending our doctrine. So busy fighting this thing and that thing. That we forget that people need help today. The story here this morning, 
talk to these four men. You see, really, this morning, this story is not just about the man that was lame, that was laid on the cart. But really, the story is about the four men who brought him to Jesus. That's part of the story. We don't talk much about that. A lot of times we like to talk about the miracles, do we not? Amen. We like to talk about how he says, take up thy bed and walk. We like to talk about all those things, how he turned the water into wine. But this morning, there's four, these four men, they carried them, this man to Jesus. However far it was from their homes, you know, it, it probably wasn't just around the block. It's probably several miles or several blocks that they had to carry this man. And it wasn't easy on them. But when they got there, there was no room for him to get into the house. But they were not discouraged. How many times do we tell ourselves, well, I'm just too busy. There's no time. There's no room for him this morning. God is always making room on your behalf this morning. There's always that time if you allow it to happen. Yes, for them to get to Jesus, they had to come at a very unique way this morning. The story needs to be emphasized that these four men brought him to Christ. Hallelujah. Men by nature are not sick this morning. But he was sick. He was basically helpless this morning. And they understood that he needed to get to Jesus. We'll call these four men this morning. If we could, Brother Faith. Brother Hope, Brother Compassion, and Brother Commitment. Hallelujah. Amen. They were committed. They had hope. They had passion. And they had faith in the one that had just turned the water into wine. The one, a man that they heard about that had done so much already. They had that compassion. Also, they were moved on the behalf. I pray that God this morning would soften us as a people. That would begin to see the lost world and those that are hurting through the eyes of Jesus. I'm afraid because of TV and internet and YouTube and news news lines and all of this, that many times our hearts have become hardened. Amen. Become hardened. Here the other day, Sheila has a couple of nephew-in-law or cousin-in-laws. They're policemen. And uh, one of them had to arrest a 65-year-old woman last week. There in Mississippi. He's a young man. He's probably about 26 years old. Hadn't been on the force very long. And he had to arrest this 65 year old woman because she robbed a bank. Amen. Listen, folks, if it gets that bad, you senior ladies, you widows, if it gets that bad, let me know. I'll tell Brother Brian. Hallelujah. He'll come and help you. All right. No. He arrested her and asked her, said, why did you rob a bank at 65 years old? She drove 80 miles from her home thinking she would go somewhere where nobody knew her, rob that bank, and drive back home. It just didn't work out. She said, because I needed the money. I needed the money. So after he made that arrest, Sheila's dad asked him, said, Kobe, did that bother you arresting that 
65-year-old woman for robbing that bank. He said, no, Uncle Tommy, it didn't. He said, why not? He said, because she broke the law. She broke the law. She deserved to be the arrested. Her dad said, but she's elder. She's struggling. He said, I couldn't do that. He said, that's the reason why you're a preacher and I'm a coffee man. But here this man had compassion. He looked at that man and said, hey, we're going to take you to Jesus this morning. We're going to do everything that it takes to get you to Jesus this morning. God Almighty this morning is there to meet our needs. But sometimes he needs people to break up the roof. Come on now. He needs people to carry the ropes of the men that are tied around the bed and to break up the roof. Hallelujah. Church this morning. Every church, every pastor right now is asking for people who are willing to help break the roof up. Do whatever it takes to get those in the church to see the church prosper. Hallelujah. You see, but God, he's all powerful. Bring him this morning. God this morning could raise a bumper crop of wheat in the Sahara Desert. But he doesn't do that. He wants you to do your part this morning. He's never done it that way. He's depending upon man. And this morning, the church world, the amen, me as a pastor this morning, we are looking towards our congregations uh, and saying we need some people to break up the roof today to get behind the vision to get behind the call these men were, didn't ever think their name would be in the Bible and 2,000 years later I'd be preaching about them they weren't worried about that they just wanted to see their friend get touched they wanted to see him leave that place healed this morning. The breaking of the roof was the only way to get this man to Jesus. So they went that way. They do it. They give whatever it takes. The 13th of this month, I've got a preach a Teen Challenge banquet for South Texas. I'm the main preacher for that. They were telling me the people when they called and asked me if I, I would do it. The people that are going to be there, some of our local celebrities and different things, they're trying to raise money for Teen Challenge. thought, you know, this morning, these men that go to that program, the only reason that program is thriving like it is, and thousands a year are helped through that program, is because somebody is willing to break the roof up for them. Make a way for them to get to Jesus. And this morning, somebody broke the roof up for you and me. Whether it was that old gray-haired saint of God praying on their knees. Whether it was that one in the congregation that's given the offering so to keep the lights on. Whether it was that one that went into the highways and byways and compelled us to come in. Somebody was breaking up the ground for them this morning. There wasn't an opportunity for them just to walk in the door. Can you imagine this morning if you were there in that crowd 
I don't know. There may have been 100 in that building. There may have been 500. We don't know for sure how many was in there. But could you imagine if you was one of those individuals and you was listening to Jesus and all of a sudden those open rafters, you begin to see light come through them and these men up there on top clearing away the shingles or or the thatching of the roof and they begin to wonder what is going on here. Could you imagine what all that was taking place? The murmuring through the crowd. But those men didn't stop. They did that didn't hinder them. They realized that Jesus was the answer for this individual this morning. And today, Lord, today, church, we still have the answer for the lost and dying. We still have the answer for the Derek. We still have the answer for the drunkard. It is to get them to Jesus at all costs today. Whatever it takes. For the blessing of a broken roof this morning. Could you imagine them? Some of them saying, what are those mad men, crazy men up to? They're dis- disturbing us today. But Jesus just kept on preaching while those men kept on doing whatever they were doing. He seemed pleased about whatever they were doing. But the crowd was probably saying, Is he not going to stop and rebuke them? But he just kept on. What did Jesus see? He saw their faith this morning. He saw their faith. And he said because of their faith, he said, son, thy sins be forgiven you because of their faith. He didn't reprimand them. He didn't dismiss them. But he saw their faith. Little is much if God is in it. Labor not for what is done. All it takes is us this morning having the faith of a grain of a mustard seed and a willingness this morning to break up the roof to see what God can do in our lives. It's time we quit looking at the church world and saying, well, it's going to hell in a handbasket. No, it's not, hallelujah. The Bible said the gates of hell shall not prevail against us, amen. I was talking with a man yesterday, yes, late evening last night, and he said, Toby, I'm just tired of dealing with the hypocrites in the church. Friend, this morning, we've always got them, but I thank God there remaineth a few righteous that still hold up the bloodstained banner that preaches the truth, hallelujah, that lives it today. We're always going to have those. You can't keep your eye on people. You've got to keep your eye on God. The problem with most of the church world today is Jesus and the word says that God changes not. Church is changed. We've lost that vision of the soul. I had a, an evangelist friend ask me the other day. We were talking. He says, "Do you still have a passion to see souls saved?" I said, brother, if I didn't, I'd quit preaching and go drive a truck or build a house with you for a while. I said, that's the only thing that could help. Is to see lives changed by the power of the Holy Ghost. The church today has lost that vision. Friend, I want to tell you something. Sin is real. 
hell is real. It's still hot. The danger is still real this morning. We must understand that we're here. If it takes us, break it up the roof to help those that are lost this morning. To turn our broken into blessed. We brag about our education. Our pastors are more educated than they've ever been. I've got a couple of degrees. Vitaly's, he's working on another degree. I need to finish up another degree. Others are working on them. We got more education we ever had in the pulpit. But friend, do we have the anointing of God that breaks the yoke of the enemy today? Do we have the spirit of God to set those that are captive free this morning? Church, when sinners walk in our doors, uh, is there enough conviction in our services uh, that they'll want to come and get saved uh, and change their life because the power of God is reveling in our services this morning? Uh, Are we already looking at our clocks right now and saying it's 3 after 12 and our preacher had him got past his first point and we're ready to go this morning? Uh, It's time we get past that and say, Lord, whatever it takes, uh, we're going to we're gonna uh, we're gonna put it our back to the to down, Lord, and we're gonna work with our hands, and we're gonna get on our knees. Uh, we're gonna fast and pray. Uh, we're gonna get behind the work of God uh, and break up the roof and bring those that need Jesus into the house. Hallelujah. Amen. Bring him in. more worried about our children's financial statuses than about their lost conditions. We're more concerned about how big a home we're going to live in than about building a foundation for that home, upon the word of God, upon the principles. How many understand what I'm preaching to you today? Amen. We've got so many things that we're worried about. My prayer is this morning, God, please break up our hearts this morning. Break up those hindrances so that we can have true compassion. True abilities to bring me in to getting to see Jesus this morning. How do you think that crowd felt? Man, I know some of you are looking at your clocks this morning. It's all right. I'm going to quit here. I only got three more points. How do you think that crowd felt? After they got the roof off, they lowered that man. Jesus said, thy sins be forgiven you because of the faith of the others. Instead of glorifying God as they watched this man stand up and walk. And they spread, begin to make a way for him to walk out. They begin to murmur, who is this man that can forgive sin?" What blaspheming are they doing this morning? They were more worried about that this morning than about seeing God. Oh, this morning, church, I want to see God move. Revival in the last day this morning. Oh, I want our hearts to be satisfied through the anointing of the Holy Spirit overflowing this morning. I want to see God move in our churches. morning, Brother Ismael, just go all the way to the last point today. Come back. 
maybe next Sunday get the other point. The last thing I want to put to you before I close on the stool of time is that broken body. The broken body of Jesus turned into a blessing that was greater than any other blessing. I was going to preach on the broken ship this morning, the broken vessel. But I'm just going to go right to that last point. The Bible tells us in Corinthians this morning, chapter number 11, verse number 1, verse number 24, I'm sorry, says this. When he had given thanks, he broke the bread. He took it to eat. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The blessings of that broken body. What to do with the broken body? Jesus was talking to the disciples there, and Luke gives an account also of this in the upper room as they're getting ready for the compassion of Christ. As they're having the Passover lamb. There he broke that bread. He said, this do in remembrance of me as a representative of my broken body. Paul testifies when he said, this is the broken body, which is broken for you. He was speaking of the death of Christ. The Son of God hung on a cross to bear the sin. Of a world that was ridden with sin. Broken things were the result of sin. Jesus was not broken on the cross because of his sin. He was broken on the cross because of our sin. Jesus, because of the sins of the world, his body had to be morning, I'd like for Brother Joe to come down here this morning, Brother Brian, if you'd come and help us with the stage. Before we give our altar call, we're going to pass out communion this morning. We're going to have a time of communion today. The gentleman will help you. Brother Natalie, if you'll come. there would have been no broken body, no broken promises, no broken laws, no broken trust, no broken things. The things that are broken in your lives today is because of sin. it is finished and give up the ghost all of a sudden everything was made whole he asked us this morning the thing 
that's in our lives to increase us more. We can rejoice. Can we stand all over this building? This morning, this cup, we find blood, the juice in it, we find bread on top. It represents the broken body, the bread does. The cup represents the blood this morning. Before we go to prayer this morning, before you take this cup, Maybe something in your life that you just need to take time. Say, Lord, I want to make sure that you can take place in this place. I want to make sure that there's no sin or iniquity or enmity between us and us. I want to make sure everything is pure. I want you this morning across that room, across this room. Just to bow your heads. Just spend some time with the Lord before you move on. Father, Lord, this morning, I'm so thankful for your son. We're thankful this morning for the way of salvation. We're so thankful this morning that he'd come to die and allow his body to be broken. Because of his brokenness and become our blessing. Lord, we ask you this morning. If there's anything in our lives, unforgiveness, jealousy, hate, lust, pride, wickedness. Today, God, wash us, make us white as snow, God. Give us your blood, keep us pure, keep us spotless. I pray, Lord, make us clean. If you're lost here this morning, right now, it's the best time. Sister Sheila just begins to sing this song. Just ask the Lord to search you. If you need to get things right with God, you can do it right there in that pew this morning. Or you can make your way down this altar. We'll meet you down here before we even have communion. Whatever you want to do. Just make things right. So, Lord, this
Bible says is take that bread this morning. It says, when he had given thanks, he break it. Take it in your right hand this morning. It said, with this body, which is broken, do this in remembrance of me. You have that bread this morning. said after the same manner he took the cup when he had supped and with the new testament this is my blood do as often drink it in as often as you remember it this morning would you pray over the drink now with me tonight. 